Hi, this is Tommy Stevens with K2 Enterprises. Thanks for stopping by for another in a series of technology-focused tips. Today's tip is on rethinking sorting and filtering in Excel. As we get started, let's take a quick trip down memory lane, if we will, and kind of reconsider sorting and filtering inside our Excel workbooks and how we can perhaps do that a little bit uh, better, a little bit more effectively using some newer tools that are available to us these days. In the past, we had our manual methods for sorting and filtering data in Excel. Those typically, of course, involved clicking a drop-down arrow at the top of a column and then choosing, uh, by checking various checkboxes, uh, choosing how we wanted to filter data or choosing whether or not we wanted to sort that data in either ascending or descending order. Now, while those methods worked reasonably well, they left a bit to be desired, um, particularly in the context of let's suppose that you needed to filter your data to many different criteria, perhaps 50 or 60 criteria. You would have to go through and, of course, check and uncheck 50 or 60 checkboxes, obviously, to affect that type of filter, and that became a little bit tedious. Also, whenever we applied the manual methods for sorting and filtering data, the original data that we were acting on changed. It, it was filtered. And so if we had other calculations, perhaps formulas that were referencing that data set, then all of a sudden perhaps our other calculations might have been disturbed by the fact that we sorted or filtered the data. Recognize that starting in 2019, if you're an Office 365 or now known as a Microsoft 365 subscriber, you also have formula-based options for being able to affect sorts and filters. More specifically, there is a sort function and there is a filter function. These do not replace the old manual methods. The manual methods are still there, but these, serves, uh, these serve as alternatives, shall we say, to the older manual methods. Now, why would we be interested in these formula-based methods? Well, as I said, keep in mind they showed up uh, in the middle of 2019 if you're an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 subscriber. But they, more importantly, now allow us to sort and filter by creating formulas that return something known as a dynamic array to Excel. And among many other things, this means that we do not change the source data. Rather, our filter results or our sort results are put in a different range, a different array of data. Now, that's a pretty important consideration because it means that any original calculations, formulas, for example, that are based on that data set are no longer disturbed. This is also, the, the formula-based method approach is also very important because we can now nest these formulas together to sort and filter at the same time using one simple formula. And so this, this really does streamline potentially uh, many of our reporting processes. Now, as we're talking about this, and we're about to jump into a, a demonstration of how to work with the sort and filter functions, more broadly speaking, don't overlook what is happening with dynamic arrays. Dynamic arrays are a relatively new feature that are popping up in Excel that break past the old one cell, one formula mentality. What I mean by that is in the past, we typically had to have a formula in every cell where we wanted something to happen. With dynamic arrays, we can have one cell with a formula, and that formula can, can modify data, or in this case, serve data, to many other cells. That will become, hopefully, a little bit more apparent as we get into our demonstration. So, in fact, let's do precisely that. As you can see, I have a listing of states. I'm going to stay zoomed in here, uh, but all 50 states are listed, and they are listed in alphabetical order. Now, let's assume that I wanted to sort this data, and I want it sorted based in population order, perhaps descending order, starting with our highest population state down to the lowest population state. I could certainly go to the data tab of the ribbon, as we have generally done in the past, and choose the sorting and filtering options off the data tab of the ribbon. We are, we're not losing that capability. Instead, we are gaining some additional options. Let's uh, just copy these headers the state and population headers, and let's deposit those over into columns E, uh, I'm sorry, cell E1 and F1 respectively. And then in cell E2, let's enter one of these new functions, relatively new functions, in this case, the sort function. And what I'm going to say is I want to sort the data in cells B2 through C51, 
and I want that data sorted on the second column. So that's why I'm putting the number two there. Uh, obviously, the default is the first column, but uh, if if you had 17 columns of data here, for example, and wanted to sort, excuse me, to sort on the 15th column, we would just enter 15 at that point. I also want this data to be sorted in a particular order. So I can enter my sort order here, and we see that ascending is the default. Descending would require us to enter minus one. So I want this data sorted in descending order, therefore I enter the minus one. And now note that this formula is only going into cell E2, but because of the dynamic array capability of Excel, the moment I press the enter key, see how I get all of my data returned in cells E2 through F51 respectively, and notice the sort order is there. Now, if I wanted that done a little bit differently, see how, by the way, that, 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 that I only enter that formula into cell E2, which means if I change my mind and said I wanted this data sorted perhaps in ascending order, all I need to do is change the formula, and now I've got the data sorted in ascending order. The sort function, very simple, very easy to work with, as you can see. Now, the filter function is also quite simple to work with. Let's just start by deleting all of the data that was returned by that previous array formula, a dynamic array formula, I should say. And now let's go back to cell A2 and let's enter a filter function. So we want to filter, again, the data in cells B2 through C51. So I want to filter that data. And I want to filter that data now when the data in C2 through C51 is greater than, let's say, 7 million. So I only want my results here to return states that have greater than 7 million people in population. Press the Enter key, and now you can see that I do indeed get those results just for the states that have more than 7 million people in population. Now let's begin to put these two together. What I'm going to do at this point is just jump out here and once again delete the data that was returned by the previous function. And now I'm going to use a sort function, but within the sort function I'm going to nest the filter function. And so what we're going to say is again we want to filter the data in cell B2 through C51. We want to filter it down just to those states where the population is greater than 7 million, just as we did before. But we want this data sorted on the second column, and we want it sorted in descending order. Press the Enter key. And now I have just the states that have greater than 7 million people. As you can see, we've st we're cutting off at Arizona at 7.2 million people. I have just the states with uh, 7 million or more people, but notice how that data is sorted in descending order. Equally important, see how my original data set is undisturbed. It's unaltered by the fact that we used this function. So hopefully, clearly, you can see here that sort and filter are two very, very easy to work with functions, yet they are emblematic and representative of all of this great new power that we have with dynamic arrays in Excel. I hope that you found this tip to be useful. We thank you for stopping by and hope to serve you again in the very near future. Come back and see us.